We're in the home of Mr. and Ms. Wilsey Moore here in Milshu, and Mary and Wilsey have just returned from a wonderful vacation. Where did you go, Mary? New York City. And who went with you? Our daughter and her husband, Dana and Jay Davis. And where did they live? Irving, Texas. And, of course, Dinah was reared here in Milshu, the farmer Dinah Moore, and graduated from Milshu High School. Uh, we'll see. I guess you graduated from Milshu High School, too, didn't you? Yes, I did, barely. <laughs> <laughs> and, Mary, you did, too? Yes, I did. And you all were high school students? Yes, we were. And I uh, guess neighbors, too, weren't you, Wilsey? Well, about four or five miles. That's yeah, pretty good that's back pretty, then. Yeah, it was. Now, why did you want to go to New York City? Uh, that's where my Uncle Wilsey played baseball for the uh, 1927 Yankees when they Babe Ruth hit 60 home runs and they, they won the pennant up there. And uh, so your f namesake uncle, Wilsey Moore, was actually from where, Wilsey Moore? <laughs> yes, I was named after him. Where, where was he from? Hollis, Oklahoma. Hollis. Was your dad from Hollis, too? Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So did you ever live in Hollis? No. So where were you born? Here in Mewsu, south of town in a house, 14 <laughs> miles south. So when did your family move to a, a south of Mewsu? 1924. 1924. So they were living there during that famous 1927 World Series, right? Yeah, right. yes. And did your father ever play baseball? Yes, he signed with the uh, New York Yankees in 1928 after Uncle Wilsey had won these ball games for the New York Yankees because he was fourth pitcher in the World Series. And they signed him in 1928, and he was with the Yankees in 1928. So he signed a contract with them. I think we have a picture here, don't we, Mary? Isn't this the picture? that was? This is spring training, right, Mary? I believe it is. And uh, On the right, now they're looking at the right. It'd be this man right here is who? That's Wilson's dad. In Seymour, and this is Wilsey's Uncle Wilsey. They did not look like, but yet they were built a lot like stocky and tall. He was big, slim, and skinny. <laughs> <laughs> and now, were there other brothers in the Moore family? Oh, yes, there was. It was a big family. In fact, his sister lived here, uh, Aunt Bertie Warren. And was his cousin lived right next to us, James Warren, until his death, and his wife still lives here. Warren. Yes, <laughs> lovely lady. And both of y'all worked at the Milshu State. I mean, no, she worked at First Bank, and then you worked at Milshu State almost as long. Well, I don't know. Fern worked a little 42 bit. Forty-two years, and I worked forty. How did you know that? Because I I was always overdrawn hey, at the bank. You got a good <laughs> I know who worked at the banks. <laughs> yes, she did. She drove in, I believe, from the farm. And I didn't start to work until my youngest daughter, Sherry Barrett, started school. And she was nearly seven because she was born in September. And I went to pick her up every day because she knew I had disbanded her. <laughs> and the kids made fun of her. And so she said one day, Mom, don't come pick me up anymore. I said, why? She said, the kids are laughing at me because my mama picks me up. <laughs> Of course, Sherry uh, lives right out there. Well, really, in, in Needmore, uh, did you grow up right there? No, I grew up m more years, I guess, at Baileyboro, and that's really my favorite years of, you know, being little. I came to Bailey County when I was three from Spur. That's where I was born. Uh -huh. And then, you know, I watched my sisters grow up and all the boyfriends and old lands, everybody came to our house. And mother cooked and this daddy said, the more they brag on you, the more you cook. <laughs> and Wilsey well, grew up at our house, too. And so, Wilsey, well, did you go to school at Bailey No, I went to Longview. There's another Longview. little school about three or four miles from there. At Longview. Yeah. Okay, Longview. Tell me where Longview. Oh, sure. It was north of uh, Baileyboro. Yeah. And now, where did you go to school? Baileyboro. So y'all really didn't start in the same school. No, I didn't even know who she was. All I knew she was a, a pretty girl from the Arnold family. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> now she's a pretty girl from the Moore family. <laughs> and has been how many, how many years? Fifty, what, six? 
56 years. Uh -huh. I converted her. Now, where did you and uh, Mary marry, Wilson? At uh, Pioneer Park in Clovis in ni June 1923. I mean, June 23rd, 1948. And so that was the baseball park. Yeah, in, we got and at home plate. At home plate. Who married you? Uh, a preacher named Roberts. Uh, Luther Roberts. He was a Church of Christ minister that was available to come and marry us. And from Clovis? Yes, from Clovis, New Mexico. And so um, I, it was this at, during the game or after the game or before? Before the game, and I recall that they packed the stadium, and Daddy and I were standing oh between the stands and I thought I was going to die because no one thought to bring me a chair to sit in <laughs> and I waited and I waited but we finally did it isn't that funny you married right there uh, at the baseball park now at the time you were on that baseball team yes right? yes and what year did you start playing with the Clovis Pioneers 1948 48 and um, but where did you really pick up your first bat, Wiltsy Moore? My first what? Bat. You know when did you really play ball at first? Where were you? It was there in Clovis. No, no, no. Oh. At, at, well, it was out in uh, Sandlots, out in Needmore, Texas. And did you have a baseball team? Yeah, we called it the Needmore. I don't, I don't know what it was. Just a team out there. Uh -huh. And hey, who played on the team with you, Wilson? Oh, my dad and me and my brother and Louis. What was your brother's name? Don Moore. Don. Louis Schaefer. Now, is that Louis Dick Wayne's Dan. daddy or Louis Wayne? Is it Louis the daddy or Louis Wayne? Louis Wayne's dad. His dad, okay. Dick Dameron, okay. he's dead too now. He was on the team. and his, I was just a kid. Mm -hmm. About how old? <laughs> oh, gosh, that was 19, probably 14 or 15 years old. 14 or 15. And so now, it, when you came into school in Milshu, uh were you in the, what, 8th grade, 6th grade, or what, when you started coming to Milshu schools? Uh, which one, Mary? Freshman. You were, uh, oh, Freshman. You were in the ninth grade then. Well, I was supposed to have been set up, but I wasn't set up. Now, what does that mean? That means uh, at that time they added uh, kindergarten in the schools, and of course they didn't at Baylorboro. And like I would have been in the seventh grade, but they just automatically called it the eighth grade. Well, where Wilsey went to school, the principal, Mr. McGuire, decided to give his students a test. And Wilsey said he didn't pass Mr. McGuire's test, so he didn't get to go up. And I don't know of anybody else that did that. So therefore, we both started as freshmen together and, you know, made it really neat. And we enjoyed each other's families. I couldn't have had nicer in-laws. And so is that when you really met Wilsey? I knew who he was, oh, for several years because the country uh, schools had, what do you call it, intramural games, and his dad would bring the whole bunch of kids over on a flatbed trailer to Baylorboro where we played ball against each other. And that's where Wilsey said he first saw me and knew to know who I was, but I knew who he was and I knew his sister because his mother plaited her hair so tight that her eyes were squinty. <laughs> Oh, now his sister still is. His sister, Sissy, as everyone knows her here, she goes by Franny now in El Paso. People knew her name as Arena, which I thought was real pretty. She was named for her uh, maternal grandmother, but I think people teased her about it being a bull arena or something like that, so she didn't want to be called Arena. And uh, she has, she lost her husband, Bob Glass, has remarried the nicest gentleman named Bob Simmons, and they live in El Paso, and his family lives in and around El Paso, and we just like them so very much. How nice. Now, you had a brother, Don, and the sister, Sissy. Any more in your family? Any more brothers or sisters? No, that's one it. One brother and one sister. And so now, did Don play ball, too? Yes, he was uh, nine years older than me, and he was playing baseball when I started. Uh -huh. And he helped me a whole lot in baseball uh -huh. because I played against him one year, and then I played with him one year. 
Now you played uh, when you played against him. What, what was he playing for, and who were you playing? He for? was playing in uh, Pampa, I think it was. And, uh, and, you know, everybody had a, a baseball team in those oh, days. Right. There was uh, Lubbock Cubbers, wasn't it? Right. The Amarillo Gold Sox. Or, right, and, right. And uh, Pampa. What? Oilers. Oilers, right. Barger had a team, didn't they? Yeah. Barger. I forgot what they were. Uh-huh. And so um, uh, Don was up there in the panhandle, and you were over in Clovis. Yes. You, and then he came down to Clovis and played also. He played in Clovis, and then we played together in 1950 in Lubbock. I played oh, with my Lubbock. brother. In Lubbock. He taught me a few things. He did? He taught me how to hit a curveball. Well, good. Uh-huh. I still can't hit a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> now, we'll see. What position did you usually play? I was play? a center fielder back then. Uh-huh. And your uncle, we'll see. What did he play? He was a pitcher. And your brother, Don? He was a catcher. What did your dad play? He was a pitcher. So it was a family affair, baseball in the morning. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. They were baseball players. And what about uncles other than Wiltsey? Were there some uncles that played? Uh, the only one that played was Uncle Wiltsey's son. He went to Texas University, and he was on the team there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, what was his name? Udell Moore. You know, that reminds me, uh, Mary, you told me a story about recently uh, a man who had used uh, some uh, pro baseball players' names. Oh, yeah. Tell us that story. Well, as I understand it, uh, a company made a, a film, a game called uh, Hardball, and they just chose different big league players' names and attached them to those players on this pin machine, pinball machine. And some of the players' wives, they must have been pretty well-to-do, got some lawyers and sued that company big time. And one year, Wilsey got this big packet of mail and telling all this stuff and for him to sign it because to be eligible, you had to have been signed by a big league club, major league club, and Wilsey had been. And uh, because his name was Wilsey also, that was against the law for them to use his name without his permission. So, Wilsey said, oh, they think I'm my Uncle Wilsey's son, and that money is not due me. So he never returned it. Well, a year later, they sent another packet just like it, saying, you know, that if he didn't uh, return that, with it failed out, they the, all the money would go back into the big fund. And I said, you know, that sounds strange. That's a different letter. I said, do you care if I call? And find out and let them know for sure you are a nephew, not the son. He said, yeah, and you can have the money when it <laughs> It was just $300, but, you know, you don't, if, don't uh, say anything about a gift horse. Just take it. So when I called them, they said, we know, we know. It's uh, Mr. Moore's uh, nephew, Wilsey Moore. And, yes, it, he is do it because of the situation. And, I mean, he, I had Wilsey fill it out. They sent it right back, and he gave me the check. <laughs> Way to go, Mary. <laughs> she still got it. <laughs> well, I hope it's invested so it's more than 300 now. Well, I don't know. She's invested a whole lot in that Mewshu State Bank. <laughs> uh, now, we'll see. Tell me, um, so after uh, you started at Clovis, where did you play next? Well, I played in Clovis in 48 and 49. And then uh, I was sold to the Chicago Cubs. Chicago Cubs yes. in 49. Yes, and I went to spring training with them, and I wind up coming back to Lubbock because I wasn't particularly happy with where they was going to send me. And they said, where do you want to go? And I said, I want to go back home. I was a hometown boy. Uh -huh. So I made some mistakes, I guess. Uh -huh. So I come back home, and I, the Lubbock Cubbers bought me, and that's mm -hmm. when I played with my brother in 1950. And it's one of the best years I ever had. I hit 370, 23 home runs, 117 RBIs, and I don't know what all. Struck out 100 times. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tell about what, what age were you that year? Uh, started when I was 18, I mean, I had 20. 20, uh -huh, yeah. And so after Lubbock, where'd you go? Well, they sold me to the Dallas Baseball Club, mm -hmm. and that's where I started my baseball deal with Dallas and I stayed with them a long time. And so that was about what 52? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, 52. Was that right? I think so. About that. 51. 51. I think it's 51. Okay, 51 you went with uh, the Dallas Seagulls. I never got... I never got to Dallas to 1952, and I played in Dallas 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, and then they sold me to uh, uh, Portland, Oregon, uh -huh. which is a New York Giants outfit. Is it? Uh -huh. it, it was New York. Yes, yeah, it was then. So uh, now in Dallas, would you come home or wherever you were, would you come home during the off season? To oh, yes. Farm? Oh, yeah. I did that every year. Every year. Yes. So Mule Shoe, you were always, we'll see more from Mule Shoe. You better believe it. <laughs> and that's where I'll end up. And and so now where were the girls born uh, in there? And uh, I guess they were born both in the Yes, Dana was born in 1950 when we lived in Lubbock, and uh, Sherry was born here in Muleshoe. I came home from the Dallas Eagle Farm Club, Longview, Texas, and she was born here. Helen and Earl Smiths came and got me. That's my sister and brother-in-law, and uh, it was wonderful having a baby in a little hospital here because I had Dana in Lubbock, and it just wasn't. They didn't care like they care in a little town. Dr. M.F. Green and his wife came out there and just sat right with Mother until that baby was delivered, and I've always been so grateful. And uh, another funny thing, uh, getting off the subject, Wilsey uh, kept hearing from a guy. Where was that guy, Wilsey, that wanted to buy your memorabilia? Buy your memorabilia. Oh, he's from Florida. I can't from Florida. And so Wilsey just didn't want to mess with it. He said, well, these things, you know, are mine. They don't mean a thing to anybody but me. And so this guy just kept persisting uh, with he and several other guys from Dallas. So Wilsey finally sold him his uh, jacket from the Portland, Oregon Beavers. And didn't you sell him something else? Or was it that's the only thing? I, just no, the that's the only thing, the jacket. Uh -huh. I've, got a picture of all that. Uh -huh. I've got a picture of him. Gave me three hundred dollars for an old jacket I was wearing to put in the museum. I was wearing to drive the tractor. <laughs> uh, yeah, talking of memorabilia, I think Dana has really made a nice scrapbook for you, hadn't she, uh, Wilson? Yeah, she's worked real hard at it. And always, oh, let's see if we can turn it. This is um, this is it says New York City trip. And she's done this very, very professionally. And, you know, this is the really big thing, you know, scrapbooking. Yes, and uh, so what do we see over here? Uh, that's, we'll see. Uh, can't read upside down. I can't either. We'll see, can you see it? Well, it just says, uh, you know, it shows a picture of me with a baseball bat. Okay. And it shows us coming through the bats right. when we was married and stuff. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, uh... This is uh, a, uh -huh. yeah, that's some write-ups about me and my baseball. Do you remember what uh, newspaper this is from? Uh, that's Dallas. This is from the Dallas. See the D, the, big D on a yes. cap? Now, we might uh, just divert from the scrapbook right now and talk about when they had Wilsey Moore days in Dallas. Oh, man, I couldn't wait till you told me that. <laughs> Don't you know when that was? Yes, it was in 1955. Gil Lamb and everybody come down there. They made all this money up to come to, you know, I'll never forget that. That's one of my first, you know, places that I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And then Gil got up there and we was going to interview me and I was going to. At the microphone yeah. in the state. And he told me, he says, uh, what do you want to say? And I, I was going to introduce my wife, my family and everything. And the phone was turned around backwards. No, the microphone. Microphone. Yeah. And I didn't say anything. <laughs> you talked to yourself. Then I choked up. <laughs> Gil said, you didn't say anything. And then I didn't know what to say. <laughs> but that's one of the most, you know, that's one of the best years of my life. Except when I married Mary in 1948. Well, that, was <laughs> one. that was number one. That was number two. Uh -huh. Then I had number three. <laughs> Went into Dixie Series, 1953. In 1953. That's the same as uh, winning the World Series, uh -huh. except it's in the minor leagues. Now, do you get something like, a, you know, a, a pennant to take home or a, a ring or a, yes. what what did you get? Uh, I forgot what I got from Dixie Series. Do you remember? No. 
a little bit of money. <laughs> And to compared to then, I probably it was good money then, but was it yes. It extended our salary for a good while. Yeah. But we won the pennant, and then we won the playoffs, and then we won the Dixie Series. And where was that played? In Nashville, in Dallas. Uh -huh. And who was in it? Uh, Nashville Vals uh -huh. and, and the Dallas Eagles. Uh -huh. And so um, that was 1953. Yes, yes, okay. yes. And so this was 55 Wiltsey Moore days. Yeah. Did they have other people days or just Wiltsey Moore days? That wasn't really Wiltsey Moore day. Oh, I thought it was. It was Mule Chew day. Oh, well, well I don't think so. No, Wiltsey Moore. Moore day and memories and for Mule Chew and Wiltsey Moore day and then memories for Kate. Well, what it was was that the high school band was out on the diamond, and they made a huge M, yeah. and that's where the three came from. Yeah. We'll see more, Mule yeah. Shoe and Memories, uh, and explain the memories. Well, our dear friend, uh, the Blanche, and uh, what was his name? Jack Linderson's daughter had polio, very seriously ill, and... Uh, that's what the memories was for, and she did die of polio in Dallas, right? And every day they would give the condition of her health until she died. And I think, now I'm not sure, but to me, uh, she was in the band. I know she was. I think she had completed the eighth grade. Maybe she had completed the... Uh, ninth grade, but I know the eighth grade she had completed. She would be uh, Janelle um, McGuire um, Turner's age. Yes, she was a beautiful young lady. Such a shame. And it was their only daughter. Yes, only child. Yes, the only child. Um, so, um, what else happened? And we'll see more days. Well, it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to say, you know. It, well, it, I called it Mule Moore Day. Okay. okay, we'll say Mule Moore Day. <laughs> the people made up the money here yes, that's to true. take the band down there, so I, I want to be Mule yeah. Day. That's very nice. Uh, they, it, it took a lot of money. You know, they took, uh, uh, Norval Howe was the band director, and uh, also um, they really worked, and I really shouldn't say they, I think it was Daddy and maybe one other man pounded the pavement. Well, I don't know. There's a lot of them. They went up and down these streets and made up the money to send that band down there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is a great moment in my life. Uh, this man's name, oh, uh, Wilkins or something like that. Do you remember? And I don't remember. I can see him in my mind's eye, short and a little stocky. And he worked very, very hard in asking, you know, the people of Milshew and the merchants to donate so the band could go down there. And um, uh, Lee Poole told Mother he'd never eaten so much peanut butter, <laughs> so many peanut butter sandwiches in his life. <laughs> Uh, Lee Poole was a, a local businessman at that time and had Poole Insurance Agency. And I guess they had farms, too. Right? Yes, they used to farm south of town. The Pools did. And so now um, uh, Mary's niece tap danced. Uh, yeah, she was on top of the dugout. And after all this was over, and I can't remember, there was little money left. And they gave me what was left. They gave us a gift certificate from Neiman Marcus. Oh, that was, the gift certificate was uh, the biggest thing we'd ever seen. And we went down and bought a really nice gold radio. Oh, funny. <laughs> oh well, that was really I, something. I funny. couldn't believe they gave me the last $50 they had. <laughs> I'd never heard that. Now, uh, that was Don't funny. you know why I love this town? Yeah. So you, you'd always come back. And so now from Dallas, you went to Portland. And what happened in Portland? Wait, wait, wait. One thing we didn't say, who the niece is. Anita Smith. Uh, she's black now. Anita married Bobby Black. And how do you think she must have been? Um, well, she was um, about 12. Uh, right. And uh, we have that on tape on our movie camera. 
Yes, and I've discovered while we were going through all these pictures, there's an absence of uh, photographs of my daughters. And now I know why. They, we were just hog wild on the movie. Oh. The, uh, you know, that was new to everybody. Oh. And, oh, I was so envious of Anita. She was a year younger. She still is a year younger. Isn't that strange? Yeah, we'll she won't ever way. catch up with me. The Lord let you work that way. <laughs> but anyway, I came home and I told Mother, I said, it was so unfair. I had to ride in that written up KMUL. No, it was KICA. KICA car and with all those spots on it, radio spots pay and that that mule and that shoe. And Anita got to get in that short dress that was so cute and tap dance out there. And and I rode in a car where nobody saw me. She had on a costume because she and Judy took lessons for years and they had the cutest costumes and Helen used to give them to my little girls play in and they thought they were Ginger Rogers. <laughs> yeah, Rogers. Yeah. Well, tap dancing was the thing back in, in the, the 50s. And now um, you went to Portland and where are we over here on our scrapbook? Okay, we... we this, is, this is still in Dallas, this is Dallas. and that's our little girls right there. Mm, right here. Right here. This and, is Diana, this is yes. Sheila. We asked her what she was looking at. She said, well, I already had my eye on this little boy. I said, oh, okay. Uh, that's Sherry. <laughs> that's Sherry. Doesn't that sound like Sherry? Yes. <laughs> that's, you know, I was substituted at school one time, and, and the children were really, really bad down at uh, Dillman. And Sherry said, I told them I was going to beat them up if they weren't nice to you. And she would have. Yes, she did. Because every Friday they got to wear jeans. They didn't wear jeans like they do now. No. She'd come home and she'd say, I beat all the boys leg wrestling. And I just thought, oh, heaven forbid. <laughs> Where'd she get that, Wilson? I don't know. I think after a mother. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, now what's next? Okay, let's see. Oh, uh, Let me look, then I'll turn it back. Oh, this, it's in New York City. Uh, this is on your trip. Yes, that's, uh-huh. Uh -huh. We're... Is Dana? Is this Dana and yeah. your husband right Yes, here? that's Dana. Are you in a limousine? Yes, we are. We're in a big old stretch limousine. And this guy had come from Atlantic City because he was doing a private job for a guy that had gone there to gamble. Oh, uh -huh. And so he was a little late. And there was a bar on each side of the door, and after riding with him, we both needed a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so in New York, you got to go to uh, Yankee Stadium? Yes, that's where I wanted to go. You had never been there before? No. Never? No. Well, it's where my uncle played. He played. He won a World Series game there in 27. He won one in 1932. Uh -huh. And I've always wanted to go there, and I didn't ever think I'd get to go because... Of all, uh, you know, it's just kind of hard to do all that stuff, sure. but now, I got to go. How many years did your uncle, Wiltsy Moore, of Hollis, Oklahoma, play pro ball? I really can't answer that. He did, He went to the big leagues when he was 30 years old. And he played. 30? Yeah. He was. Uh, he played with the Yankees 27, uh -huh. and then he played with new, uh, the Red Sox in 31 and 32, or and then they bought it back. To New York, and he played and won a World Series game 32. Uh -huh. But now the years, I cannot but, tell. You. But that then that was all for the Yankees, right? Yes, uh -huh. the World Series games. He won two World Series games. Uh -huh. And so, who were some of the people that he played with? Babe Ruth was the main one. Sure. And then Walt, uh, Walt Pipgrass, Herb Pinnock. Uh, I don't know what the other. There's four pitchers, and they won 80 or more games. Just mm -hmm. them four. And, and so, um, can you explain? Here we've got right here. Uh, yeah, and this was your birthday celebration. Uh, you going to tell us how young you were? Seventy-five. Isn't that wonderful? And so, uh, this is Yankee Stadium right here. And uh, this is. Go ahead. This is across the street. All of that is painted on a wall, and of course, everything up and down that street is a baseball. Tourist trap. Oh, oh my goodness! But now, uh, to get out there, did the um, 
did the um, limousine take you there, or did you go on the subway? Uh, from the hotel to the ballpark, we went on subway. Uh-huh, that's good. You get off right at the ballpark. You just walk right out there. Can you tell me your feelings? On the subway? No, no, when you went to Yankee well, Stadium. I don't want to know about the subway. <laughs> well, I just felt like, well, it's where I wanted to be in my life. Because I thought after Jody Majo died that I might be a Yankee ball player. But when I saw Mickey Mantle and Dallas play against us, I said, I'll never be a Yankee. <laughs> Mickey Mantle's it. Uh -huh. So that's what I settled for. Uh -huh. uh, Mary, how did you feel when you got to go to a Yankee game? Well, I was probably not into baseball as much as a lot of wives. To me, it was another huge part and another ball game. But the pleasure was watching Wilson. The pleasure was watching Wilson. He was just in a little dream world. Mesmerized. Yes, he was mesmerized. And Dana and Jay had worked very hard getting this done. And they loved it, too. Just loved watching him. And, of course, we tried to eat everything, hot dogs. and uh, How much was a hot dog? Do you remember? Thirteen ninety five. <laughs> we'll see now. No, that was for the hamburger you ate at uh, Mickey. Thirteen ninety five at Mickey Mantle's. Thirteen ninety five hamburger. Uh, oh yeah. Mickey Mantle's is a restaurant there in Manhattan. Well, um, well, is it a chain, Robert? Mickey Mantle's. I don't. It, There's one in the yeah, uh, at least one. And now, uh, tell me about. Uh, um. Uh, who played the game that you saw at Yankee Stadium? Well, it was the Yankees and the Rangers. Oh, the Texas Rangers. And what was the score? Well, at the seventh inning, it was one to nothing, the Yankees. Uh -huh. And we had to leave because uh, we was going to Cooperstown. Uh -huh. But we wanted to get out ahead of that crowd because it's a big crowd. Right. There's always a big crowd there. And if you're riding the subway, and that's the only way you really go to Yankee Stadium because of the safety. Right. Well, we had a car rented, or my kids had rented a car, and we went back to the hotel, and then we left to go to Cooperstown. Uh -huh. And uh, that's why we didn't have any more time, so we left at 7th and go to Cooperstown. Uh -huh. But uh, the Yankees wind up winning 2-1. to one. It was a good ball game. Uh -huh. It really was. The Rangers and the Yankees, well, well, it couldn't have been uh, more perfect. Well, everything just worked out right. Well, now tell us about Cooperstown. Uh, it's hard to tell you about that place because it's just, uh, you know, I've been seeing all these people. It's in the Hall of Fame. I played with Bob Gibson, which is Hall of Fame. I played with Willie McCovey, which is in the Hall of Fame. I played against Mickey Mantle. I played against him in the Hall of Fame. I played against Yogi Berria. I played against uh, Whitey Ford. I don't know. But see, I don't, you know, I can't tell you, but I played with two of them. And uh, when you got to Cooperstown, uh, did you see anything of your uncle, Wilt oh, Seaver? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Everywhere you turn, there's something about Yankees, and they, sure. his picture was always with somewhere. 27. Yeah. yeah. And and the 32. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, so, uh, uh, Mary, what about Cooperstown for you? Did you enjoy it? Yes, I did. It was such a beautiful drive up there. About how far from New York City? Well, uh, it was about five hours. We thought it was three. And so we didn't get there until 11 o'clock that night. But as long as it was light, it was upper New York. And we've never seen that many trees in our whole life. <laughs> But, you know, it's hilly, and everything was very beautiful, well-kept. And the little town of Clipperstown itself is just adorable. It's a smaller town than Muleshoe, but everything is geared toward baseball. As you probably know, they say baseball started in Clipperstown, New York. I noticed in the last year or two someone had said, no, that wasn't right, and they were being uh -huh, trying to take the title away from them. And we even went to, uh, no, these are some of the pictures. Yes, in the Hall of Fame. It's a beautiful museum, just a wonderful museum. It's well presented, 
and uh, has a gift shop where we spent hours looking at books and th I guess Really? It's, it's Babe Ruth and Ted Williams. Uh -huh. The rest of them is just plaques of oh, uh -huh. people in home run. Right. That's only two. Those are like mannequins, is that right? Right. Uh -huh. right. That's the field. That's right the field. Uh -huh. uh, well, it's... I can't remember which one it was that's coming to play there, but they're all going to be there Sunday. This Sunday. Yeah. Well, they're going to uh, induct. Uh, they they induct. Uh, they're going to induct Dennis Eckersley and Paul Molitor this Sunday. Yeah, yeah. There it is. It's a pretty little ballpark. Is it? And do they induct once a year? Yes. Yes. Do you enjoy watching baseball on TV? Yes, if they, yes, I if still do. <laughs> well, I don't if really I, second guess them much. Oh, that, I'm not a second guesser, uh -huh. but I like to watch them play, and uh, I like. Do to you watch. have a favorite uh, th th this season? Yeah, the Rangers. Always. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Well, me and uh, Stacy down, our preacher down there, so Stacey he, don't, he don't like the Yankees. Uh -huh. And I said, well, maybe it'll be the Yankees and then maybe it'll be the Rangers. <laughs> and I said, who are you going to bet on? And, of course, he's going to bet on. But he said, I'm going to pull for the Rangers. And I said, I'm going to pull for the Rangers, too. <laughs> what have you got there? Anything specific? Uh, this is, uh, we were just uh, doing the tourist thing. In, in, in Manhattan. Uh -huh, in Manhattan. And... I, I'm sure my feet are a size larger and my legs are inch shorter because I've never walked that much in my life in one day at a time. But we uh, were located downtown. It's where we stayed, and therefore we could do a lot of walking and not have to get a cab all the time. Because every time you got a cab, it, of course, it's very expensive. Well, you could walk 10 blocks before you could get a cab 10 blocks. <laughs> that place is busy. Yes, it is. Uh, was there any place else in Manhattan that you enjoyed uh, a lot? I think uh, Grand Central Park was one of the beautiful, one of the most beautiful places. We went there. Now, I don't know if that's still in Manhattan or not. Sure, it is. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah, it is. And we had dinner with a student of Dana's that now works in the Chase Manhattan Bank as an investor. She was born in Korea, brought over here, and that's where she and her brothers and sisters are educated and she took us to Tavern on the Green which was a lovely lovely place just catty corner to the big Central Park entrance or one of the entrances and for the four of us our dinner was three hundred and two dollars and we just ah, I mean we knew I mean that's the only one we allowed. Guess who paid for that? <laughs> the student <laughs> Back in, I put it on the credit card, and I just now got it paid. <laughs> oh, well, even iced tea is higher there than uh, in my kitchen. <laughs> and uh, the Statue of Liberty and the, yes. the just the tourist things. Yes, uh huh. Tourist things, uh huh. Uh huh. We, yes, we enjoyed riding on the ferry. There was a young Asian girl and. Of course, uh, I'm real bashful, as you all can tell, and I said, hello, and how are you? And she was just so eager to talk, and I said, well, are you t just over here by yourself? She was about as big as a flea, and she said, yes, I'm here. I'm looking for a school because I want to be an interior decorator. And, of course, New York City would be the place. And she said, I am so lonely. I just want to talk. And so we talked, and we talked. And nice. That was nice. Uh -huh. So those are just the. Um, this is downtown. Uh huh. And this is the financial district there with the bull. Sure. And they wanted us to We couldn't go up in the Statue of Liberty. It's still closed. Uh, uh -huh. I think it's been open since 9 11, but uh, they're renovating something. Uh, yes, yes. And uh, World Trade Center, is this what it looks like now? Oh, yes. Well, it's. This is, okay, this is what today it's looking like. It's, 
It just left a hole in your heart to go down there. It felt sacred to me. What's still standing? The cross. The beam. That beam that was left standing is in the shape of a cross. And we went to the churches that were nearby where they took so many of the bodies. And they still have so many banners from children that wrote the sweetest things. And they kept some of them. I, I know that in Grand Central Station, uh, there was one from the people of Lubbock. And someone uh, who lives in uh, Manhattan is from Lubbock and just happened to be walking through uh, uh, Grand Central Station and was so touched to yeah. see that banner from Lubbock. Oh, I did not know that. Well, this, uh, that will really, it'll kind of get you thinking, you know. What would it been like to be in there that day? And we went to the church and everything, you know, and we just, uh, it was... Really yeah, Dinah Dinah had been there before, hadn't she? Yeah. yeah. She had, yeah. Uh -huh. She and her husband both have been there several times. He works for an airline, and he's a rep. So, you know, he's just flying everywhere. But uh, she uh, travels a lot herself. Every spring training, 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 got that on the brain. Spring break. <laughs> she teaches. She is an English teacher, and uh, she now is the tour guide for uh, people from her school. It's usually students and teachers, and some of them go each time. And she's been to England, of course, she enjoys England because of Shakespeare, and she uses that in her classroom. But Sherry and Dana went a couple of years ago, and they just had a ball. Of course, Dana would just standing around dying and laughing at Sherry. Cause well, Sherry can, can you just see Sherry in New York City? <laughs> <laughs> it was her 50th birthday, she told me. Yes, her 50th birthday, and she didn't miss a thing. She'd like to go back. And her six-year-old daughter wants to Yeah, granddaughter. The Sherry's granddaughter. Yes, yeah, Sherry's granddaughter. But Sherry says she's too little. Right now, she couldn't keep up with the pace. Uh, and she wouldn't appreciate no. what she was seeing at no. six. She needs to uh, be a little older, so she'll read Maybe 12 or something like that, because she'd be wanting them to carry her, and they can't carry her. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, uh, well, of course, the architecture in New York City is just so beautiful. Always clocks. You know, beautiful clocks. Is this the Ed Sullivan Theater? Oh, that's the right NBC and the entrance to the Rainbow Room. Up trying to get in, and we didn't get to do any of the tours. We just ran out of time. Flat ran out. How long were you there? Well, we was there the two days, and then we was two days in uh, uh, Cooperstown, and then uh -huh. back two days or so. This, of course, is the United Nations. Yes. And that's St. Paul's Chapel. Oh, they have such beautiful churches. You didn't go across the Brooklyn Bridge. We didn't try to buy it. We didn't try to buy it. <laughs> we just saw a picture of it. Did you go up in that? Oh, yes. When I, I wanted to go so bad into the Empire State Building because I had a letter from Daddy in 1953 when he went telling me what uh, a inspirational um experience he had had there and so early early one morning Robert went to work and I went by myself before there was a line I just walked right up and I don't know what time it was but maybe um oh eight o'clock and usually the line is so long oh, yeah. and you wait in line for everything, everything. wait in line but, wait. but that was the neatest thing and I was up there almost by myself Well, it's just, uh, you can see the whole New York City. But on the World Trade Center, years before that, or several years before that, Gil Robert had taken us to the World Trade Center. Now, that was even more wonderful because you were up so much higher. And uh, the, the etching on the top of the uh, World Trade Center on the windows told you what you were looking down on. And it was so helpful. And... Um, it, it was something to remember. And that's winding up the trip, and here is pictures back in Dana's home. This uh -huh. is home in Dallas, in Dallas uh -huh. or Irving. 
And I'm doing what you always do after a trip, laundry. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't this a nice birthday gift? Yes, it, it well. I mean, now, was the uh, Reagan funeral about that time? Yes. Uh, it was the same time you were in New York. Yes, right? yes, it was the same time, and it was whenever that horse got Beat, what was it? Yeah. Um, Smarty Jones. Smarty Jones. Uh, beat, uh, same time. Uh, but, you know, uh, that was said that he got beaten, but I think his owner and his rider, they had a wonderful attitude toward that, that he had come so far and they had come so far and they were the underdogs, mm -hmm. and, and I was inspired by their attitude. Very gracious. Really gracious. This is Lou Gehrig giving his farewell speech. All those many years ago, Wilson, do you recall when that was? No, I, I can't remember. And just cards and birthdays. Uh-huh. And pamphlets and everything. You know, he died of that Lou Gehrig disease, and of course, you know, that's... that's Devastating. Yeah, it is. And we've had people here die from it. Of course, you know, Rocky Floors, wasn't it Rocky? Yeah. And then... Um, um, out at uh, Circle Back. Um, yes, uh, help me with his name. I can't think of his first name. Um, Billy Gore. Uh, Billy Wayne Gore. Billy Wayne Gore. Gore. Yeah, and he's had it for, I bet, 15, 20 years, you know, oh, and oh, just. Yeah. Um, don't live. Oh, no, not that long, not that long. We want to look at a few more things here in Wiltsey and Mary's home that pertains to uh, Wiltsey's baseball career. Reading glasses and holder are here. Of Babe Ruth, it says to my friend Will see more. Babe Ruth, in 1927, but that's to my uncle, not me. Uh -huh. But uh, my uncle's kids had one of these made for all us kids. How nice! And that's what. The sequin red ball cap and matching fanny pack. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is Babe Ruth. Yes, this is a picture of Babe Ruth, and my cousins had a replica made of it, and it says to my friend Wilson Moore, and it's 1927. Mm -hmm. That's now, your that's, uncle. That's my uncle. Uh -huh. It's not me. But it's a real good picture of Babe Ruth. And then this up, picture up here is when Mary and I got married. At Pioneer Park right. before the baseball game in Clovis. And this was my dad in 1928. He signed a contract for the, with the Yankees. And this is my uncle Wilson and my brother and me down here. Now we've got one picture missing. And this now you're on the right, and uh, yeah. Wilson Moore, the uncle, is in the middle. Uh, and then Don Moore, your yeah. brother, is now uh, yeah. deceased. And that was when you both played for the Lubbock Covers. Right, we did. And this is my baseball bats. And and your name on it, or his That's, name. On it. That is actually my uncle's name. That's his signature. That's his signature, because I don't loop my W. Oh, I see. But uh, I went ahead and let him leave his name on my bats, and I've got probably five or six. I got one for all the kids and the grandkids. Yes, I've got some of them put up. But and these. and then the the center picture is your uncle. Right. Now that's you. That's you. Oh, yeah, that's me. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know when that was. Well, it was when I was in Dallas. Dallas uh -huh. yes. And down here uh, is uh, a wedding picture uh, in uh, Clovis, but this isn't your wedding. No, right? this is my, my roommate, which uh -huh. is just you know, which he was a little guy. <laughs> and uh, his uh, ex-son-in-law is being inducted in the Hall of Fame. Oh, really? Sunday. Oh, how exciting. So... It, it's real exciting Who for is us. His former son in law. Uh, Dennis Eckersley. Oh, how nice. Uh, do you keep up with your uh, farmer players that you play with? Well, a few of them. Uh -huh. yep, of course, <laughs> a lot of them's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, Wiltsey, we'll let's look right here. Here's your uh, dad and your uncle, Wiltsey. This is my uncle, and this is my dad. Okay. And that's 1928 uh -huh. in St. Petersburg, Florida. Who's the baby right here? Yours truly. That's me. Oh, that's you, Wilsey. Yeah. That's the Wilsey. That is the Wilsey. <laughs> okay, now here's the Clovis team. Uh -huh. 
team. That's, first, That's your first one. That's the first team I was on right there. That's the first team in the... Uh, and where are you? Right. Yeah. Okay, seated on... Just Seno right there. That's my buddy. He was my roommate. And it's his uh, former son-in-law. Yeah, he's... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, now, I don't know which one to go. They, I'm going to skip this. Which one next? Uh, oh, there's so many of them. The the okay, this is 50. That's the first year I went to Dallas and okay. in double A. We won the pennant and then in nineteen fifty three where it, I don't know where it's at, but we won the right Dixie Sears and everything. This one here. Right here. Uh -huh. But we won the pennant a lot of times in nineteen fifty five and nineteen fifty six and see there? Nineteen fifty seven. And then's when I went to Rochester, New this York. One is Rochester. Yeah. Now, this is one where we got Bob Gibson in there that I played with. It's in the Hall of Fame. Now, the one that's in the Hall of Fame, the first black boy I played with was this one, Dave Hoskins. He committed suicide when he was about 44 years old. How sad. Now, when did they actually uh, let um, um, black... In the Texas League, 52. Jackie Robson in 47, you know, with Brooklyn. So this was the first one in the Texas League. Let's see this. Let's see right here. Here's a, is this the same one, the black man? Where is it? Who? Willie McCovey. He's in, right here. There he is. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's right here. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame. I played with two people that was in the Hall of Fame. Oh, this is Eddie Knobloch right here. He was uh, one of the famous ball players, and then he had uh, what was his cousin named Mary? I can't remember. Nephews, I guess. That was in the big leagues. Now um, let's turn around here and see about this one. That's when I was in Rochester, nineteen fifty-eight. I like the frame. That's that's a good frame for that it really is and oh what about that one that is uh they had a deal at dallas at, on the deal whenever you come in you know on, you'd vote for the most popular ball player uh -huh. and they wrote their names in and i won this shot oh because <laughs> i was the most popular ball player that year and who's the man that's dave goldstein he was a uh, uh Pawn shop oh, guy. Oh. And I think you still got that gun. It's right over here. Just a minute. And uh, definitely this one, you're with Dallas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was at Dallas, but I don't know what year it was, to tell you the truth about it. I don't, I don't remember uh, any of the other pictures uh, you have in glasses on. Well, I didn't wear them very long. I didn't like them glasses. And they <laughs> tried those contact lenses, and they didn't work. And then the doctor said, just don't use them. So I did. Uh, and, of course, uh, there's other things sitting here, but I noticed this is your mother in this one, uh, Sammy. Miss N. C. Moore, how'd your daddy get the name Nudie? That is beyond me, and I don't know where we got the name Wilsey either. My grandma gave it to us, I guess. Uh -huh. And um, now, what about this picture? Who is this? That's me. Uh, Wilsey, <laughs> uh, probably out on the farm. At uh, would you say need more Wilsey out of the yeah, far Longview? Uh, uh, Longview. Oh, you and your sister, uh-huh, Francis Glad. Uh, no, what's her name now? Simmons. Simmons of El Paso. Oh, I didn't see these back here. I'm sorry. The baseballs. Okay, tell us about the baseballs. Oh, this is our wedding, June 23rd, right here, 1948. Everybody signed it. That's it. That's me. Oh, 
I got Stan Musial to sign this one for Siri. I didn't want him to sign it for me. This is when they first opened up the ballpark in Houston. You know, the one that uh, they built that was covered. Uh, Astro Dome. And that would have been in about, um, let's say, 60s, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he signed it. That's his name, Stan Musial. Right here. Yeah. Kind of faded out. And so that's a famous ball. It sure is. I saw him play in 1955 uh, in St. Louis. Uh, and that year he broke a record. What was that record, Gerard? Nothing. Oh, oh, it's just a show. Okay. Nothing to oh, that. This okay, is this a, one. This is the one they. Well, they got me to come down here and open the season at. Uh, Little League Park, and this oh, is nice. the, So they signed the, And the little boys here in Milshu signed yeah. it. Yeah, that's And you know, that's the mayor's signature yeah. right there, Cliff yeah. Black. <laughs> that's what that baseball's for. Uh -huh. yeah. Carl uh, Eldridge, Eldridge, maybe. And, uh, well, that's who? Mark Washington. Mark Washington, and he's your neighbor. Yes. <laughs> that was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. That, that's nice. Well, uh, Mary and Wilsey, we want to thank you so much for sharing your baseball memories uh, uh, with us. It, it's been a real, real pleasure. I hope you'll let us come back. I want to tell oh, you oh, one more right. story. I know. Here, you look right there and tell it. <laughs> when I left Texas and went to Portland, Oregon, uh, up there, there's a guy that kept riding me. And he'd say, why don't you go back to Muse, you will, so you can't play baseball. And I said, well, if you'll pay my way back to Muse, you, I will go. <laughs> and then he'd become my best friend. Oh, really? But I was having a bad time. It was raining and everything, and I wasn't used to it. And I couldn't get anybody's hits. But he kept riding me, and I thought, you cannot go around and do anything, you know. If you'll pay my way, I'll go back to you. Well, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> and he took his advice. He did come back to Muleshoe and back to the farm. What year did you come back? 1959 or 61? 59. 59. 59. And has been here ever since, and we're glad. Of course, I never did leave here. <laughs> I just left here for a little while. Maggie, uh, let me say to Jody and Charles, here we are again. Because they said, we're tired of y'all. And we've laughed and laughed about that. So. The Mayhews. Uh, the Mayhews. <laughs> so I just thought that was so funny. I've had a mile of laughter out of that already. Uh, well, see, one thing I'm noticing right now, we did not on this other wall, uh, the baseball glove. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this baseball glove here, I didn't even know we had it. Oh. And it's over there in that picture of my uncle and them. Uh, 1928. This baseball glove was with my dad in 1928. And when I retired from farming and I went out there and I started and dad died and everything, and I was up in the garage and I found this glove. And that's the glove in 1928. That's a glove he had. Isn't that nice? Now, is this your glove over here? This one here. Uh -huh. That's my last glove. That's your last glove. Yeah. And I never did wear these. You didn't wear the shoes, but that's your last glove. That's my last glove, and those shoes, I never did wear them. I got a pair of shoes and a glove every year from Ben, uh -huh, signed sure. up with them. And uh, what's the mug? The what? The mug you're holding, is that anything? Okay, that's my Uncle Wilson's deal, and it shows when he won the games in World Series 1927. Uh -huh. That's the name of the pitchers, Wade Hoyt, George Pitbrass, Herb Pennant, and Wilson Boyd. And I'm supposed to get the one from 1932, but they didn't have them. But oh. they're, uh, we're supposed to get it. From Cooperstown? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, no, well, not really. It's just uh, you can order it. For you can time. order it. And what's this behind you? Is that just Babe Ruth? Oh, that's just that's a collection of. Uh, that's just a collection of Babe Ruth. Okay, I think we covered the waterfront or the baseball diamond with Wilsey and Mary Moore, the Wilsey Moore of Muleshoe fame from right here in the Mill Memorial City. And 
all more baseballs. Uh, a basket full of eggs? No, it's a basket full of baseballs. It's it's one for nearly all them years I played. Isn't that nice? With the players' names on. How wonderful! That is really special. Of course, this is the old man here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you. Oh, good.